Uh, my name is Orji. I'm the head of Managed Cyber Security Services for Algo Systems. And uh, today we're going to chat about uh, how we can uh, manually uh, infuse automation. Now, to start with, just a disclaimer. I mean, I know it's over a year since the anniversary of GDPR, but just to let you know that it's not yet another GDPR presentation, so I guess it won't be boring. <laughs> Now, uh, a few words about myself. I hold a bachelor's and a master's from Athens University of Economics and Business, uh, along with uh, numerous certifications like uh, CSSP, CISA, CISM, etc. Blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you why blah, blah, blah. I work in ICT since uh, 2004 and in cybersecurity, security cyber since uh, 2013. I used to work for a uh, Fortune 500 insurance company in Ireland, in Dublin. That's my action as well. Uh, an InfoSec leader in Greece, and uh, currently, as I told you, uh, I'm the head of cybersecurity for uh, other systems. So I've been uh, deployed in uh, more than 20 countries, including uh, some of my specials like uh, Ukraine, Lebanon, and of course uh, South Africa. And uh, to complete the you know the security posture. I'm also a self-defense instructor, which was actually pretty handy in South Africa and Germany. <laughs> now, uh, the agenda for today, which I probably won't keep, but in any case, I'm afraid, it would be our two cents uh, uh, for the cybersecurity scene, mainly in Greece, but I guess that uh, you know covers uh, the majority of Europe, maybe not the central one, but generally, you know, Europe. Of course, about the manually infused automation and uh, a bonus track for all the cyber vanilla, as we call them, that uh, they attend uh, uh, this uh, venue today. I I'll try to keep it, I mean, the, uh, the total time is 30 minutes, I'll try to keep it 20 10, so uh, it will be enough time you know, to elaborate for, for some questions. Uh, I mean, I don't like uh, very much the monologues, but okay, I mean, uh, I'm sure that we'll have a question as well for that. So, uh, to start with, uh, we would need to uh, agree on, on some things. So, first of all, we would need you know, to accept uh, that IT is uh, generally the elephant in the room. So, I mean, we're pretty, it's pretty clear what it means something that everybody knows about, but uh, I mean, most people, they don't really want to talk about it, to address it. So, if the ICT is the elephant, cyber is the mammoth, which is actually just a bit relevant. So, uh, a bit more difficult, uh, you know, uh, to address. Another thing is that commodity equals baseline, which means that, I mean, commodity um, sometimes is, uh, for me, by mistake, uh, it means, it tends to mean something that is obsolete, something old, something that needs to change. But commodity actually, in the financial terms, is the baseline, something that has a solid value, and an organization has spent a lot of money, effort, therefore culture, to adapt it and make the most out of it. Therefore, we will really need to embrace commodity and then keep it as a strong foundation in order to build stuff on top of it. Also, cybersecurity is more than buzzwords. Yeah, says the guy with the CISSP and the MSC InfoSec, blah blah blah. That's why I was uh, start, you know, started with two months on two shows. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, uh, so, okay. Our, our job titles are cool, or maybe a bit weird. Uh, our business as usual, again, follows the same patterns, but nevertheless, cybersecurity is here and addresses tangible problems and actually assists the business as usual uh, of an organization, of a company, uh, which means that uh, there is a true and actual problem and uh, we do solve it. which jumps to the conclusion that cyber is here and enables both IT and OT and help to enable business. Uh, now, I mean, since uh, we've agreed on them, uh, let's take a historical 
sorry for that, guys. Let's take a historical uh, uh, step. We are um, 36 years from the first movie, uh, The War Games. 33 years uh, from this one, you know, your man Cliff. And 30 years, if I'm not mistaken, from the, from the first computer war uh, by Roman Ball. So, there is evolution. The technology, of course, is something that evolves day to day. So, we manage and uh, solve even newer problems. You see here some, uh, some uh, commoditized uh, technology, like from basic MDM to any application, any device, uh, asset management with an, uh, the old uh, pool Excel to actual asset management uh, from uh, VPN to privilege access management and again, uh, you know, the proxy server that, uh, you know, of the past to a more um, militaristic approach. Uh, okay, and that's an evolution, but guess what? It creates too many logs. And then we say, yeah, okay, we found that. So there is an answer, we love SIM. But, uh, you know, SIM creates just another problem. There are too many logs, and we just we don't need to gather them. We need to actually understand what they're saying do something, uh, and uh, you know, that's uh, again uh, quite a challenge. Otherwise, if we needed just logs, we're Kiwis. Okay, so time. Uh, who knows why, uh, why I put the Kiwi here? I mean, if you're, we have uh, network engineers here? Come on. <laughs> network engineers, no one? <laughs> Kiwi? The syslog server. Okay, so we understand the need that uh, we actually need to do something with all these logs. But again, returning now to the cyber security scene, uh, in order to do that, you need to, to have efficiencies. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the situation, you know, ends up in being something like that. So. You have very few people that they, tru they truly understand and they can truly realize what the problem is and offer a tangible solution. So you end up with something like that. I mean, for a company, there is uh, one monitor for every customer, so you have like 12. It's okay for the first year, I guess. So either you end up with something like this, or you say, okay, fuck it, I'll go full blow. And then this is your playbooks if you're running a security operation center, and this is your crisis management strategy. I mean, they're both cool, but uh, believe me, they don't, they don't scale. Especially, you know, the first situation, because uh, this guy's gonna be older, so the other guy will just end up with more monitors. But uh, still, uh, this is a problem that obviously can be, you know, can be solved using automation. And, uh, you know, the, the obvious answer would be, let's uh, put dev in it, and so we'll automate it. So, okay, cool. But the, the, the bystanders relationship between dev and seg is something like that. They want Im imagine that in a waterfall model, like dev, and then seg, and then dev, and then seg, and then no probably no seg, because up to here. So, dev and devops, <coughs> actually ops would be the way to go but uh, in, an, in a different uh, in, in a different model that's why uh, we're talking about infusing something so the whole concept is actually to avoid having just you know dummy actors doing repetitive things but uh, have people uh, enhancing technologies and actually automate all the boring stuff and actually let the analysts do what they're supposed to do. You know, analyzing, becoming better and providing actual help. So, coming now 
to a traditional, traditional, yet okay, commoditized model, and which were like static resources, perimeter based security boundaries, the end to end responsible for every matter, yeah. People, I mean, the companies call them focal points, but they're rather a scapegoat, so nobody likes that. Disconnected security tools. I used Nmap last year to, you know, to do a vulnerability assessment, and now I'm just, I'm using something else. Okay, uh, not a great value out of it. Rarely automated, duh, we're talking about automation. And it's IT driven. IT is cool, but again, it's a commodity. So, with my friend Cyclops here, and all the fancy stuff, these are buzzwords, uh, Python, Kubernetes, everybody does Kubernetes today. And uh, the APIs that, uh, you know, all the tools, they, they offer APIs, we are here and need actually to transform the more, the, the more commoditized stuff of systems and net to sysops and netops, and of course security, to set up not just the operation center part, but everything. And of course, the dev to become DevOps, so it's, uh, it's infused inside our own infrastructure, our own technologies. Therefore, we are holding already the solution in our hands. See that? But, okay, the future, that's why you cannot see it, it's ops driven. It's A-B driven, it can be highly automated, and it, it is highly automated, there is serious security responsibility, so we can have segregation of units, uh, you know, uh, a steering committee perspective, not just one point of blame, as I call the focal points. And of course, elastic security boundaries, I mean, this is by design and need, since we're talking about cloud and some, and some agile uh, stuff in our business as usual, you cannot... Uh, you know, it's. Uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense to talk yet about uh, a static infrastructure. Now, we're trying now to see how this will be housed by the 360 of cybersecurity. We have, of course, assurance. You know, the penetration tests, the vulnerability assessments, and all this, uh, and all this stuff. The uh, the last from the past, as I call it, you know, a more traditional model that the customers do understand and believe in it with uh, professional service and support. The security operations center, but we're talking about a general matter of operations and not just, uh, you know, what uh, we think about it today. And of course, the theoretical part of, uh, uh, you know, of cyber security, which is governance, risk and compliance. So in order to in order to strive, you need to strike first, strike hard, and so no mercy. And I mean, this might might be back then the bad guys. But if you know, I don't know if you have seen the newer version where you know the actual douchebag is Larusso, not them. So uh, you see here, and we're always talking about vendor independent solution here. You, you need to have everything interconnected, and you can have everything interconnected to get the value out of it. So, an event gets infused with the threat intelligence, then you apply all the policies that either you have pre-decided or not, and then you add a context, and then you get a, a, a nice mess like that. So. It doesn't really matter if we speak about, you know, the World Wide Web, okay, that's fine, <coughs> the email, uh, DNS, maybe some commoditized firewalling, uh, threat intelligence again, the endpoint, and of course, uh, something that uh, resides in the, in the cloud. So, we can accelerate detection, investigation, and remediation. Now, let's go to today's uh, takeaway. I won't uh, I'm supposed to say I'm more, uh, I'm not supposed to bash your balls uh, a lot more. So, let us be all the geeks one needs. I mean, let's assume that, uh, I mean, uh, you know, 
even if there are end customers today here, uh, again, a little old cyber, old information security professional. So uh, let us be all the geeks on this. Uh, there is, uh, you know, we can we can uh, uh, succeed a lot. Cybersecurity tends to become, with a nice aspect, a nano commodity. So we're amassed in one organization. Of course, we need to realize that the focus should be on the important stuff for the business, which is their business as usual, aka these are the business as usual revenue. So to go to the tech part as well, the open architecture and the MSSP approach for you know for the service providers, uh, it's a must. So we go from something traditional and stagnant, that's the correct word here, stagnant, to something more flexible, agile, and adaptive, because this ought to be today's approach to any situation. And of course, from something capex to opex, it's win-win for, for everyone, since we can charge only what one uses, and the customer and pays only what he's using. So that's why it's a win-win. And of course, it's high time that we leverage all the software investments and can actually speak, even in economic terms, about TCO in software and service. Not just, you know, I bought a few servers, one is the total cost of ownership, etc. Uh, any questions? There is one bonus slide. Uh, I'll go there in a minute. Are there any questions? Okay. Oh, my English are poor. This is uh, a takeaway volume two. And, uh, you know, uh, we decided uh, to, uh, uh, to add it here after, I mean, uh, the past few years, I personally interviewed a lot of uh, uh, green people, as we say, you know, right after the university or maybe with a couple of years of experience trying to join the, the cyber security field and you know we're coming over either for engineering position I mean either after advertising an engineering position or a security uh, analyst uh, position uh, but everybody I mean the majority of them approaching the uh, you know this opening with one dream either stating or you know either stating that they are or wanting to be a penetration tester and that's fine up to an extent, but, you know, I think that not everyone is to become a pen tester, and that's completely fine. I mean, there are other jobs. I'm not a pen tester. I mean, uh, you know, I've seen the metal spoils only, you know, in its webpage. So, and it's not a matter of capacity or, or capability, and that goes, I mean, for, you know, uh, for the younger people that, okay, uh, maybe, you know, it's, you know, because of the movies or what you you, th you think you can do or after, you know, hacking your neighbor's uh, uh, Wi-Fi because it still uses uh, a web. Uh, so, it's cool if you can become a pen tester eventually. I mean, in any case, in order to become a pen tester, you need to know solid about systems networks, how they work. If you've never built a bloody Windows 2008 server, believe me, you won't be able to hack it. If you haven't set up an SQL, a MySQL database, again, why bother doing an SQL injection? Try to understand the SQL part first. Or if you haven't set up a router or a firewall, how do you think that you're going to bypass it? If you don't know how it works, if you, I mean, if you don't know subnetting, you cannot become a pen tester. So, you know, this is from uh, a real, a real life uh, experience. So, not everyone is to become a pen tester, and that's fine. I mean, not even going to the, you know, to the sales jobs. There are consultants, pre-sales engineers, uh, other engineers that, in their business usual, they are and they are considered. You know, uh, major uh, cybersecurity professionals, 
and we are not contested. Thank you very much.